Hello developers, I hope you are doing well. I know it's quite a long time that I'm not making videos, I was really busy, I'm really sorry about that. So, but um, I'm here today and today's topic is, uh, I mean, I'm gonna teach you today uh, user authentication using Marin. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to log in, how to register a user uh, and store them in MongoDB. And um, so uh, let's not waste time as always. And let me show you our demo. In advance, I want to just inspect our page. So let's click this register and let's, uh, and let's randomly type something to name with our email com even let's change this email let's type something pppgmail.com uh, because it's easy to remember and i want to log in that user that we are going to re register and some password here let's click submit and you see it's success and you are successful like and subscribe for next video please please go ahead and subscribe to channel and like the video so let's take a look at, a look at application and we are also uh, storing um, this user in our local storage after uh, MongoDB because we don't want to delete user, uh, logout user, I mean, after uh, refreshing the page. So now let's delete this and uh, as you can see, it uh, automatically directs us uh, redirects us to uh, dashboard, right? And let's go again to register and I'm gonna try to, oh, let's refresh and go to register. And now let's try to actually, lo actually log in that user that we have registered, gmail.com and our password. Let's try and you see it's here again and we are after a few seconds we are inside of our uh, dashboard page also user is here so what if i uh, let's say enter uh, irrelevant let's refresh firstly and go to register what if i enter wrong password here let's try something random here and submit you see we have error here internal server error a server error and we are going to enough here so uh, i hope it's clear and now let's build this here it is it's just a folder and i just want to create two folder inside first client and second will be server so um it's of course a preference but I, i'm going to use with my server gs um, because I love firstly to do my backend. So now let's keep this open even here in order to see what's happening. And now I'm gonna navigate to, let's open our terminal and let me make this bigger and let's navigate to CD server. And inside of this server, I'm gonna build server GS file. Now let's add, let's define a silly console log here that I am working. So first of all, we have to initialize the, um, our server, right? And in order to do that, just type npm init dash y. This will create um, the package, the JSON file for us and choose yes automatically for each question. If I click enter and here, you see, here it is our package.json. Now we can uh, install our express node mon and also .env uh, package, right? And after that, inside of this package JSON, I will delete this test, we don't need that. And I'm gonna change this node to node mode. So let's type npm start. And you see I'm working and our app, our server is working. And now, um, just one thing that I want to do here is to change type to module. So you can ask what is that? This simply 
change our types to uh, module, module, right? Because um, as you remember, we are usually defining, for example, express like that, right? Require simply express. But uh, if I change this type to module, uh, I can do import instead like that import express from express so it's clear now let's invoke our express uh, const app equals express and invoke that and uh, now let's create a dummy route here dummy home route app dot get just home route and request a response like that and inside let's send some for example welcome and also i need a port in order to listen to that uh, let's say process.env.port if not just 5004 and app.listen our port also a function that's another console log is backticks if you can find this backticks it's under your escape button uh, let's say we're running on port save and here it is running on 5004 now um what i need to do here after that and um, let me see i want to let's define here dot env and i want to import my dot env from dot env and also invoke that config like that so let's create our dot env and i had a port right in my um port variable i just want to change port to 5003 and in here it was four now i have to restart my server in order to see changes here now it's you see it's ch it changed now so after that let me see also i just want to create git ignore dot git ignore it's because simply ignoring some files for example i don't want to push these node modules to my uh, github for example right node modules also i don't want to give my sensitive information that's inside of port now port is not important but maybe in future i will define here my mongodb url or some sensitive data and i will ignore that simply and then um let's right now connect to mongodb and let's make our connection firstly i will create here a db folder but not inside uh, yeah inside of server and now inside i need connect.js file now in here i will just create a function let's say but firstly of course we have to install mongoose we install mongoose mongoose helps us to connect with uh, to our databases um mongodb special of course just it's for mongodb npm sport start again and let's say mongodb atlas type in google and click this first one sign in just if you don't have account uh, you just create your own account and um, uh, it's pretty actually straightforward to create cluster so you will just have to create a new cluster here when you will be here you will just have a username and um, password inbox here you have to define your username and email and at the last you will see uh, ip um, ip address box you have to add your ip just you'll press uh, use my own ip and create cluster and it will be pending firstly and it will be created next so you'll click this connect now i have 3d my cluster here 
connect and connect your application. Just make sure it's in Node.js. Copy this here and close this one. And come here, just let's define, let's now just build our, uh, let's make our connection. Firstly, we have to import mongoose from mongoose and const connect db equals a function we have url inside and return mongoose.connect now our url so we have to export this uh, default connect db in order to use into different files now for example i'm going to use this in my server js just make sure i mean keep in mind that this mongoose.connect method actually return gives us a promise right returns us a promise and that's why inside of our server js when we are going to build our function that will uh, make our let's say connection to our mongodb uh, must be async await so let me show you uh, so what i want to do here is a function because uh, define a function because I want my server to spin up only if my connection is successful to my databases. Database, uh, for example, const start is async function, and of course I have to import my um, Mongo uh, connect DB. Let's say DB import connect DB from db connect dot just make sure to add here a gs because if you are using type module we have to add gs at the end and let's type here um let me see please um, let me remember my server gs um if it's async we have await connect db and uh, yeah inside of dot env we have to add mongo underscore url and just paste this our link just please don't use these uh, credentials um, that i i'm typing here because it won't be active uh, i will just delete this cluster after recording this video delete this password just type your own password in this case i have all um let's say just three letters save and close this and just as you know we have to restart our server because we are making changes in our dot emb await connect db here and uh, inside of this connect db we have of course process dot env dot mongo underscore url if i save now uh i also want to cut this from here and paste here and save and invoke this start function here now we will see yeah server is running that means we are successful to connecting our database and uh, let me see after that we need uh, oath controller and roots folder of course in order to define our path and uh, get posts so firstly uh, i will create here let's close this all this stuff from here except for this server js and inside of this server uh, folder i will create controller uh, folder and inside i have oath controller.js now inside of it and um, i need just two functions first for my register equals async uh, because we are gonna be uh, in actual connection with our databases and res now oh, what's that leave us please res dot send um let's just say register and i'm gonna copy and paste this 
change this to login. Oh, I forgot to add request response here. Also here, request response. And let's change this to login also and export just our register and our not console log, just log in. Now, mm -hmm, it's cool. And also I need um, roots folder, right? So let's create new folder roots. And inside I need our roots in our our root just js in order to um define my path rules whatever you say um now first i'm gonna import my express also define my root uh, variable here uh of course router not root and equals express dot router and invoke it so in advance i'm gonna export default router and now let's define our roots router dot root uh, first will be a register and post method will be our register function you see it imported automatically and let's add here gs we have to and also change this to log in now i have to copy this and paste and add here log in also log in here so it's cool now in my uh, server gs again i'm gonna import my uh, root uh, out roots here right so let's say root and import um out root from roots and out root dot gs don't forget to add this dot gs and um, after that after uh, importing that and after our home route I'm gonna use a path here will be API version one oath and second element will be oath root. All right, so it will be our main, uh, let's say, path, and then for example, will be slash register and slash login. And uh, but before all of this, I want to use again express the JSON here. This express the JSON actually helps us to read um, JSON data because as you can see, we have post methods here, and we will have uh, for sure uh, um, JSON data from these post methods. And in order to read that, we need express the JSON. So save here and now let's go to postman and let's try that if it's forking or not now already i have here it's uh, the path uh, i mean localhost is 5003 as you can see and api version one out and login if you um don't have postman installed you can install it just just type in Google Postman install and it's pretty straightforward to install. Let's uh, even, let's assume you have a uh, new um, let's see, screen here. You'll see probably something like that and close this or whatever you want. Choose your post and HTTP, you see kindly suggests me some path. We have localhost 5003 and API version one out and register and if i send this i will see a register here now if i say login and send this i will see login here if you see this one that means you are successful so let's close postman and let's carry on now i'm gonna close this one
also make this terminal smaller. Now, what I'm going to do is build user model, actually. So user model is just schema. It will be schema, Mongo schema that will uh, define uh, our user, what we have, for example, name, password, email, and stuff like that. So um, let's build models folder and inside we have um, user.js. Now, of course, I want to import my mongoose from mongoose, mongoose like that. And now let's define schema const user uh, schema equals new mongoose dot schema um, parentheses and curly brace name will be type string of course and required will be inside of array true and a text basically it says please provide name and after that, we will have min length. It's optional, of course. I will choose uh, four. Uh, min length should be four in my case. Also, I can say max length 20 or 25. And the trim will be true. Now, after that, I also have email. And email, again, type will be... Uh, string and required will be true and um, let's just for now keep in mind for now let's say unique true and make uh, keep in mind this unique true is not validator we're gonna just validate a few seconds uh, after uh, after a few minutes we are just gonna validate after a few minutes. I'm going to show you a simple package that will help us to validate our email. Also, we have password here. It will be again type string and required will be inside of array true and the text will say please provide password and after that, I want to say min length is uh, six and select false. Now save this and now let's uh, export our model. Export default mongoose.model. It will be our user model and also our user schema. So cool. Uh, what I want to do next is to validate our email. Now I'm going to show you a cool package in order to do that. Type npm install uh, validator. Uh, technically, we can do that validation without this package, but this is easy. And what should I do manually if something already I have? So let's import validator from validator and before this unique it's optional validate and braces let's say validator is validator that is email like that and actually message that will tell in bad case play please provide a valid email address, for example, or just valid email. Now that's it, it's our validation. Now I want to make my initial setup in my register user. user. So let's go to our, let's close this user, and let's go to register.js in my controller, actually of controller.js inside of my register function. And I will define here to try and catch. And here will be error. And 
uh, inside of this tray. Where is my? Let me let me see it, please. Um, give me a second. I'm just struggling. Oh, what did I do? Okay. So in my register, I will firstly uh, first let's send on this sketch. Let's say our status is five hundred. The JSON is, for example, message and an error occurred. For example, in try, but let's say const name email. Password equals rec.body. Rec.body is just place that we are typing in uh, something. And const user equals await uh, user, our user model. We have to import it, by the way, from our user, schema, user file. I mean, whatever you say, import user from db. Oh, what's db? Oh my goodness. Models and user, don't forget to add GS. So await user.create. And in this case, firstly, for now, this will be just um, a name, email, not user, sorry, email, uh, also name and password. Password, save that. Okay, and rest status is two hundred one. The JSON it will be our user. So I think we can actually try in our Postman if it's working or not. So let me come here in Postman, but this time use body and row, and instead of this text, use JSON. A curly brace and name, um, or some side of quotation marks, and for example, let's say each side and pass. Uh, I mean, email will be, for example, random stuff gmail.com, and uh, my password will be again some random stuff. If I click send, oh, it should be registered. I'm sorry register if i click send now you see we are successful so our e name is here our email is here and our password is here of course we are gonna avoid to uh, to send this password back because we don't want to actually send this password back i'm gonna show you how we can do that and also let me show you something interesting now as i told you we are uh, we actually have validated our email that means we can't use the same email for registration for example i use this email for registering this e-site user but if i click send this again you'll see an error occurred that i've entered um, in here in my rest status 500 internal server error because we have validation and we already have this in use. So cool. Now let's handle this password part. I don't want to send this password back. And um, in order to do that, I will go to my, again, just give me a second, please. Oh. Um, probably you remember this part I just type here user, but instead of this just user, I will define a curly brace here, and inside I will have email, will be user.email, and the name will be user.name. If I save and try in Postman with another email address, gmail.com for example, Send. Okay. And here it is. You see, we can't see our password right now here. We just have email and name and nothing else. So cool. And um, after that, let me see what we have also. 
And yeah, we have to now hash our password actually, because um, I mean, if you are building, let's say full stack projects, and if you have, for sure you will have um, authentication, you have login registration function, uh, it's a vital to hash passwords because if, uh, for example, someone tries to hack or just hacking your database, the attacker directly gains access to your passwords. I mean, you, he just sees our, your passwords that's stored in your database, right? But if you hash your password, uh, even if attacker has gain to your passwords, he won't, he or she won't be able to see the real passwords. So that's why he's vital to, to hash passwords. So um, now I'm going to teach you how to hash passwords. So firstly, let's go to user. Let's close this out with controller now and let's go to user GS. And now we have a package to install. It's simply bcrypt gs not just bcrypt ah uh, it's bcrypt gs so after installing that let's restart server and i want to import bcrypt not bcrypt bcrypt gs import bcrypt gs from bcrypt gs and now after the password user schema I just went to uh, define here my user schema dot pre and save. Uh, with that, I am telling simply that before saving my user, uh, no, it's self-explanatory as you can see. Before saving user schema, uh, pre-saving user schema also, you can imagine we want to do something. For example, I want to hash the password. Seconds, I want to define a function as a second argument and const let's type a salt variable here, define a salt variable here and await bcrypt.js dot generate salt and 10. So keep in mind the more uh, value in gen salt you have, the more strong this password will be. But unfortunately, the more you have, the more slow it will be also. And I strongly believe the 10 is pretty decent and strong and cool, safe, whatever. And so this password is equals await bcrypt.js dot hash. Now we are hashing this the password and our salt here. So I save this. Now let's take a look in Postman once more. If I add something here, because we have used this email once, if I click, send, but, uh, I mean, we won't be able to see password because we have um, we have deleted from here. Uh, where is my auth controller? Let's, let me also add here, for now, temporarily, password is user.password save now let's take a look and send send once more um what's your problem man oh okay it's working sometimes it's uh, something happening now you see our password is here but it, it's hashed you see it's um nonsense symbols here so that means it's correct and we are successful. So as I told you, I'm gonna delete this password from here. And now oh, we need JSON Web Token, of course, because we have to have some uniqueness, right? For example, uh, I mean, what's JSON Web Token? So uh, I love to explain stuff by a simple real real time real life words not bullshit you know terminology but i have confronted something interesting that first time in my life google actually explains this uh, pretty good so let me show you what google says about that what is json web token if i type here no why use G if you type why use G gvt here very good explanation is here 
So I really amazed that the statement that Google uh, shared the first time Google didn't actually baffled me. So information exchange. GBTs are a good way of securely transmitting information between parties because they can't be signed, which means you can be sure that the senders are who they say they are. So you see how good sentence is that. So it's kind of uniqueness, you know, for example, if you are building a, um, let's say, um, blog website and you want to create, delete and update your blogs, um, by using JSON web token, you are sending uh, when you are creating blog, you are when you are deleting blog, and when you are updating blog, and uh, JSON web token will be belong to uh, you. And um, actually, in fact, nobody except for you will be able to touch your posts that create by you. Additionally, the structure of GBT allows you to verify that the content hasn't been uh, tampered with. So um, uh, it's good statement except for this and thing. Anyway, <laughs> you got me. And um, let's carry on. Um, so let's create our GBT. Uh, firstly, I want to stop my server and install um, JSON web token. And uh, I'll put all these links, by the way, in the description after uh, recording this video. And um, let's create, uh, close this as well. And inside of my, again, user GS, I'll say user schema again, dot methods, dot, let's say, create GVT equals function and return gvt dot oh we forgot to apparently import gvt okay gvt from json web token and let's delete this what's that return gvt dot sign i had user id is this dot id so uh, keep in mind that all user that we are going to uh, authorize or authenticate will have unique IDs, right? Each per each stuff that you are doing in your app will have its unique ID. So after this ID process process env dot gvt secret. Uh, this will be stored in our .env file. I'm going to show you where to get actually this GVT secret. Uh, secret also we need expires in. In this case, it should be one day, but uh, also, for example, I don't know, one day is decent, but uh, I will also store this to my .env, well, let's say GVT lifetime lifetime and save that it will crash of course because we don't have these um variables now inside of my out controller again after um creating user i will just say const token equals uh, user dot create gvt and uh, invoke that like that also after this curly brace name i will say token in order to send my token right and i have to now define this gvt secret and gvt lifetime let's go to env and gvt lifetime I will start with GVT lifetime because it's short one day. Now I'm going to teach you how, where to get this GVT uh, secret. Secret is, let's go to a website, cool website that all case generator, copy this case, secure K and uh, paste here and save. Also, we have to restart our server. And what he's telling us, type error, user schema method is not a function. Okay. Why? 
Oh, creativity is not functional. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. What did I do? Okay, it's cool. Now, um, I want to try it actually. Let's come here and add something to this email and send. Oh, I have a token here as well. It's cool. It's cool. It's working. I'm happy. So now, after all of that, um, what I need to do to, uh, by the way, I, I finished register user functionality and just now I need to do the same for my, uh, for my login user functionality, right? And in order to do that, firstly, I want to install just Morgan, Morgan, you can carry on without Morgan, but I want to install anyway. Morgan is just um, express, I mean, uh, express middleware that logs um, HTTP requests and errors. And inside of my server, GS, I will come to my server, GS. Where is my server, GS? Here it is. And uh, let's define Morgan here. I will import my Morgan from Morgan. Such a nice name, Morgan. And let's invoke that. Uh, let's say, not invoke, I'm sorry. Let's say if process.env.not underscore env doesn't equal to production if it's not in the production. We just need this in our um, workplace, right? And then add it use Morgan and development, just dev or whatever. And cool. So I'm gonna go, I'm sorry for email. Mm. I'm gonna go to my now user GS again. And let me see what we supposed to do in user GS. I'm struggling. What is that? So, mm. okay. Now I'm going to compare password right in order to log the user in. Okay. Now in user GS um, model, let's say user schema again, dot methods. Oh, what did I do? Oh, dot methods. And let's create here a compare password, password and equals, of course, async function. I will add a candy, candidate here. It's my candidate password that I'm gonna check if it's matching or not. So let's say const is match equals to await my decrypt gs dot compare method. I have your compare method, my candidate with my password that I am typing here. So simply I have a password that I've registered, for example, a user with email and this is my candidate password that I'm trying to now log the user in. So I'm comparing this one. So return is match. So of course we're gonna also make a fail statement in which case we're gonna log user in. Now let's go to auth controller. Auth controller. And let's delete this red send from here. And uh, I'm going to say um, const, in this case, I don't need name, email, and just password, and equals rec.body again. And if email or if password is incorrect, then just throw, not throw, rest.body status 500 um, dot json and we need message let's say uh, please provide all values so cool 
and after that um, after this if statement I'm gonna say const user equals await user dot find one I hope you know this find one method from MongoDB email so this is important part so we are finding now email let's select now I'm gonna explain this in trash plus password now this is um kind of confusing right why what is it, this select and password so a few seconds ago just we I, I told you we don't want to send our password back right and if so we don't have any access to our password but if we have email if we don't have password back how we are gonna log the user in of course after finding this email we are gonna select our password we are adding our password taking again here right and uh, now you are gonna say okay we just didn't send our password back and now we are sending here a game back what's the point now uh, of course and after sending this back i'm gonna also uh, will make our password unreachable so i'm gonna explain don't rush let's make another if statement let's say if it's not user oh my goodness if it's not user, then res.status again 500 unauthorized, uh, unauthenticated error, of course. Dot JSON message, let's say invalid credentials. And after that, uh, let's handle correct part const is correct equals await user dot compare password that we had here where is our compare password let me find it uh it's login oh compare password it's it was our in user right compare password here it is compare password um let's define this like our password so let's say if is correct if isn't is correct then again it will be invalid credentials let's copy and paste this simply here and in good case const token equals user dot create gvt invoke and now again the password that was back i selected back here now i'm gonna say user the password equal to undefined simply again so rest.status is 201 or yes 201 dot json will be our user token and save that let's try in postman so i will just delete this name from here because in login part we don't need that and change this register to login because we have registered this user and i'm going to try to now log in it so if i click send now you see i log the user in it's success so it's cool now this was our backend it's pretty short and interesting right i hope you understood completely so let's go to front end part so now everything is okay as far as i can see and our server is running and now let's go and build our client folder our client side uh, stuff let's say i'm gonna build new terminal here and then let's target our client folder and inside of our client folder i want to install my react uh, create my react app let's say mpx create react app in this case we won't give any name to this app because we already have one client just let's put dot that means it will install this react application into this folder press enter and um, I will be back when when it's installed.
So as you can see, our client, let's say our React app is ready. Just I want to inform you that um, I just add a route here, another route after this, our home route is just slash API slash version one and the response to JSON, just we have a message that says here, you can just type whatever you want. Uh, let me show you in my server local host if I type um, API version one and you will see a message here is here. Just add this and that's it. So now let's go to, let's close this server. We don't need it anymore. And um, I'm gonna come here in my client React app, let's say in my client side, and I will install a few packages here. First is React Router DOM, and second is Axios. Press enter and let's wait for installation. And now let's start our app by typing npm start. And here it is our app. Also, I just want to close this server localhost because we don't need it either. And I want to just clear this stuff from here, unnecessary files, setup, report, logo, even index CSS, app tests, and delete this. I mean, delete everything that you can see except for index app and app CSS. <clears throat> Let's clear a bit, put a comma here, save. Also, let's clear this head part from here. Don't need this logo. And um, also app CSS and here it is. So what we should do here is to <clears throat> actually create just three folder in our source uh, directory. First is context for our global context, <clears throat> and second, excuse me, and second will be page, and third will be uh, components. Okay. Now I will um, start actually creating my pages. So I need uh, again three pages. You can ask why. First is our re register JS, our register page, in order to handle our register stuff. Second is our dashboard. Uh, dashboard because uh, when I'm registering or logging uh, uh, logging users in, I just want to redirect that user to our dashboard, right? And uh, also, I just want to create one additional file page will be landing JS. Landing is that <coughs> actually it's not necessary either. I mean, I'm not gonna build okay landing. Uh, let's build just register JS. And um, I need dashboard cheers. Okay, so RFCE, it's our snippet. And then um, here we have dashboard, also our register, right? Let's change this to React. I'm gonna work with it because. Okay, <clears throat> and um, what should I do here also? Inside of my um, register JS, I want. To, but before, of course, uh, I have to set up my React router DOM inside of my app JS. Let's come here and import browser router. In this case, I will import as a router, short form, root, and root. <clears throat> also, I just want to import a link from React router DOM. Now, in this case, let's cover. Uh, stuff with router router inside we have roots and our individual roots uh, I mean root just and in this case our dashboard will be our home page and that's why just slash and element I will import my dashboard uh, page and also, I just assume you have small knowledge about, little knowledge about React Router DOM because I have tons of videos, tons of website tutorials that I'm talking about React Router DOM, how to use that, and so on and so forth. 
and so on. Uh, second, second will be a register page, <clears throat> and let's change this dashboard to uh, register. Also, make sure it automatically imports. Save. Let's try here, for example, as you can see, slash is dashboard. If I type here register, we are inside of our register page. So cool. Now, um, that's it for now. And let's go to register and let's set up our register page. <clears throat> Firstly, I want to ins uh, import my use state and use effect from React. Use state, use effect from React. And um, I need initial state, const initial state equals um, name will be just empty, email will be again empty string, and password is same because by default our values are just nothing, right? And is member, uh, we are defining with this is member, this will be uh, boolean uh, boolean val uh, value actually <clears throat> and uh, you can define okay what did i do here is member is true you can even type here false it's up to you <clears throat> it's not vital i mean we can change this later <clears throat> so after that um inside of now register i want to build define mark state let's say values and set values equals use state and our initial state and now after that we technically we will have inputs right and that's why we need few function here first will be handle change function in order to ch uh, change event um and e is event and console.log will be e dot target and also for submitting our form we need on submit function right let's say handle submit arrow function or just e event will be e dot prevent default it uh, just prevents um let's say default action that it it um, actually when we are submitting forms it won't refresh uh, our page if we define e that prevent default and also i want to console log let's just say log our e dot target <clears throat> so now inside of my div inside of my return I want to define my form we don't need action and just on submit and my handle submit function right and that's it so what I also need is h1 for example and let's say login a header simply and I need just one label HTML for a name and um, of course name inside of label and we need one input here type will be text value will be values dot name and name will be name and also on change will be our handle change and that's it after that i need a button for submitting it of course let's say submit and type will be submit as well now um after that actually you know what uh, for example, uh, since we are using React and React is all about reusable components and I need three input, uh, let's say, boxes, I don't want to repeat this in here. I want to create just form input JS component here and cut this from here 
and uh, put inside of put inside of the div and uh, making this reusable by uh, passing props right and what we will need is firstly name type value also um, let's say let me see what we also need Mm, of course, handle change simply because uh, I mean we are all, we are def we will define our uh, handle change prop props here as well. Handle change and also label text for our um, label text, right? And let's change this. Of course, this HTML4 won't be name. It will be dynamic. That means we can pass here name. And in our name, uh, we are gonna say if we have passed label text, it will be it. Or else we, else we are gonna use our name. So type will be our type prop, and value will be our value prop that we have here. Name will be also name and we already have on change handle change. So let's save. And now I can add my form input here simply. And now if I um just give me a second please if I define your type for example let's say type First will be text and value it will be values in first case name because it's our name input and uh, name will be just our name because it's our name in third and uh, different ones it will be for example email and password and handle change in every case will be handle change. Just make sure you spell correctly. So let's take a look. Let's go to register and here it is our beautiful input box here. Now if I copy and paste this three times because we need three input boxes, name, email and password, save and here it is. So just I need to change this. First of all, this won't be text anymore. This will be email and this will be email as well. Name will be email and handle change will be same. And last one type will be password and value will be values that password name will be password again. So we have name, right? We are passing password here and we are not passing actually in a name to our label text because in our form input we told if we have label text use it if not use just name in this case we have names here and it used just email and password so cool let's close this input also dashboard and let's carry on and let's see what we have so um So uh, now I want to, what I'm going to do is just make this, um, make define a toggle button, right? In order to convert this into register uh, input box and also convert back to login boxes. So how can I do that? Firstly, after this button, uh, after this even, let me see. Okay inside of this form after this button i'm gonna need a p tag and <clears throat> firstly uh, inside of this p tag i will uh, define a condition here if values dot is member in this case it's opposite uh, opposite side of values is member in this case it's true and this means if it's false then uh, text will be appear already a member question mark and else it will be not a member yet question mark it's just a single line if else statement you can imagine and we need a button type will be button and in here 
uh, again a condition here values dot is member again if it's false we will have login button else we will have register button so but it's not working because we of course need a function in order to make that working how can i do that is uh, to build we have to build actually a total member uh, function here let's uh, let me show you how we can do that let's come here above uh, after this before this handle change let's say const toggle member equals um arrow function and we have set values here i just want to define my all values and just change this is member to opposite sides or write values that is member so um, this dot 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 values is actually all these are uh, will be same just we will change our is member uh, to opposite side in this case to false now i want to define this inside of my button by typing on click toggle member member and save so let's try if i click register you see already a member then click login not a member yet and click register so i also want to change conditionally this header how can i do that is it's very simple though um i'm gonna come here to my h1 and again do something conditionally if values that is member it's, if it's uh, true actually it will be login else will be register if i save and take a look you see it's our register page we have three inputs and already a member if you are already a member let's click login now if you are inside of login page now the one simple small problem is if we are inside of this login input box we don't have to uh, we shouldn't actually see this name inbox because in order to log user in we don't need this name it's not necessary at all so another conditional stuff here is again if values dot is member then just show this if it's not member that means in register page only i want to see that save you see in our login page we don't see our name inbox if you're inside of register page we see our name box uh, input box here so cool and uh, let me see what we have to do now now okay let's create our context global context now inside of let's close all this for now i don't want to see messy stuff and so page inside of our context uh, i need uh, three files again first will be app context but gs second will be reducers the gs and first will be a third will be sorry actions.js and now inside of our <clears throat> app context i will define my context now global uh, use con uh, my global hook now let's import react from react with bigger with uppercase of course and also we need some hooks here first will be use state use reducer and use context hook in order to build our context so also i need um uh, initial state here const initial state uh, and let's keep this here we don't need to type anything here then uh, later i'm going to explain what you should put inside and let's define const app context equals react dot create context so it's our context and now let's say const our app provider equals our children i'm going to explain this 
inside we have return and now inside of this return we are gonna define our app context that we have create our uh, context here app context dot provider and inside of it our uh, our children so you may ask what is that we are just actually gonna build we are building though our a global context that we can use in every file in our app and this children is simply our app will be because we are going to cover our main index um, inside of our app in main index with this app provider and this children will be our app so uh, now also what i want to do here to build a state const state and set state equals use state initial initial state what the import here and in this case we don't have actually anything in our initial state and let's add value here will be our state okay now uh, after this function i want to also define my hook let's say const use app context make sure it starts with small use otherwise it's it's not gonna work equals arrow function and inside return use context and our app context that we have i create our app context direct that create context you can see here so now oh last step is to export this let's export app provider app context here is app context uh i mean use app context i'm sorry use app context and our initial state now let me see what we should do next okay now i'm gonna go to as i told you in my main index file in here and import my app provider app provider from context and app context and now i'm gonna cover this all our application with app provider as app provider and don't forget to put a comma here and inside our just simple app if i save and everything is same simply it's working and now last step not last step uh, to go to register js let me find inside of page three register js and handle this one now just i'm gonna import i have to do something here is to import use app context from app context and let's go to reducers js and i will build my reducer function is our first uh, element will be state second will be action just simply if you wonder we are gonna change our state based on these actions that will be inside of our actions and now um, let's for now just throw new error that will say no such action this should be back because though okay in here let's type action the type okay now let's keep this here of course we have to export default reducer export default reducer cool now let's go to again inside of our app context yes we have to do something in there first step is to change this use state to use reducer and and at here our reducer it will automatically import it from reducers and also change this set state to dispatch 
OK. And now I'm going to turn back to my register.js and fix my this functions because it's yet some dummy console logs here. Let's start with handle change and our set values here again. I'm going to copy all my values again, just inside the arrays. Let's say e.target.name and e.target.values. So um, I also want to fix my handle submit, of course. After this e prevent default, I need something from my initial state uh, equals values. It's simply name, email, password, and our is member uh, values, right? And now I have a statement if statement here. If email is false or it's not exist, uh, it doesn't exist, or if it's password, or if it is just name but only if we are trying to register we don't need inside of our login but input boxes keep in mind then just return it and for now let's just console log as well what's happening values okay let's keep that here and in here in order to try stuff i want to now connect my front end with my back end so it's uh, pretty straightforward actually uh, is well i know my server side localhost is running this one server running is 5003 right and i just want to use proxy in order to uh, connect my front with my backend and i will add inside of my package.json my proxy is simply http localhost 5003 if i save and just keep in mind uh, i have to restart our server let's see mm, it's pending pending pen oh cool it's working so technically we have connection to backend but we haven't finished yet so i'm going to explain later just let this proxy stay here and um, let's go to app context now. Where is app context? Here. And now I will add here inside of my initial state user, firstly, null and token is null also. Now I want to now define my actions. My first actions uh, will be a register user begin, register user success, and a register user error. So I don't want to type this manually here because it's pretty easy and uh, I mean there is no need to write manually here. Just copy this or if you stop the video and copy this. It's just simply register user begin is same inside of strings and this is same and this is same also. So now what I want to do with these actions to actually import this into our reducers and also in our app context. So let's import something from actions. It will be register user begin, register user error, register user success. Same for login user begin, login user error and the login user success. Also, let's just copy this and paste inside of app context here and save. So cool. Um, now, inside of app context, I want to make build my register user functionality. After all these functions, um, let me see just a minute, please. In my app context, Yeah, of course, since uh, I want to make my build my register user functionality inside of app context, 
in here after this state. I want to say const register user user equals uh, it should be async and let's add here a current user add a function inside let's for now just console log our current user so I want to add that my register user here in order to use in every file it's it, it's global from now on and inside of my register GS I want to uh, inside of my own submit function and the submit function I'm sorry I'm gonna delete this console log from here and uh, I will simply tell const um, name email and password um const current user equals to this one i'm sorry and name email and password so i need a simple if statement here if is member then we have to login user right technically if it's member there is no need to register it again so let's say already a member but else if it's not a member we have to register it right so register user is oh sorry of course we have no register user for now because uh, we haven't actually defined inside of our use app context let's after this state say const register user equals use app context and save here come here and say um, register user is our current user this element and save and cool so what I also want to do now I will go to my app context firstly I want to import my axios that I've installed before axios like that and now in my register user function I will dispatch my action type firstly will be no, TPA it's type type firstly will be register user begin and for sure we have we have to define try and catch here in order to catch some errors in our server and in my try uh, I'll tell const response my response will be equal await my axis the post API version 1 oath register we have this path in our server side as you can remember probably and now second element will be current user and now I want to console log my response as well here so um, after console logging it I need from my let's say const my user my token and this equals response to data and now again I want to dispatch my success action here if we are successful uh, in uh, registering user type will be my success again type will be register user success and my payload will be user token so that's it and now inside of my catch of course I have error action right as well so firstly I want to console log error that responds and lastly I want to dispatch my error action original type is register user error and my payload will be don't pay attention just to this error it's not vital 
error dot response if they tab that message. It's confusing, I know, and, and that's it. So um, now I want to go to my regi uh, reducer and make this uh, actions, uh, I mean, make this stuff in my reducer. Last step of registering our user. For example, my first action, uh, first uh, in this reducer, we're going to change our states uh, based on these actions, right? And if my action, the type in this case, equals to register user begin, I just want to return my um, state. But if, let's copy and paste this, and uh, this is equals to success, I just want to again, uh, let me make this something like that state. Also, I need my user is action, action that payload dot user. Also, my token will be action dot payload dot token. Now, uh, but if we have error, let's copy and paste if it is no. error. And in that case, I just want to keep my state here. I don't have any action here. I didn't, let's say, create on purpose. Let's stay, keep that state in here. I, I don't have any alert if we type something incorrectly because I just want to keep my video shortly. But don't worry, in next week, I'm going to build, I'm going to teach you how to build full stack more, um, website like blog app or something like that. And in that case, I will explain this again comprehensively. So last step in our registered GS is to navigate our user to our dashboard uh, after registering it, right? So if uh, for that, I want to import my use effect, I already, I already have use effect, uh, use navigate from React Router DOM. And inside of register user, I want add here, just my user here uh, from use app context. And I want to define my navigate equals use navigate here. And don't forget to invoke it. So now after that, at the end here, I want to define my use effect and two elements in our array. First is user when user changed and then navigate. And then I hope you know what is use effect. You, you should you should know actually if you are trying to learn more and stuff. Uh, if you're interested in this kind of thing and you, if you are trying to build this, at least you have to know uh, how use effect works. So inside we have if statement user. If it's user. I need set timeout. Set timeout is JavaScript uh, method actually, um, function actually, and it um, makes some actions uh, in certain time um, frame, right? For example, if I add here 3000, that me this means three seconds. This means whatever I do here as an action will be. Um, uh, I mean, will be after three seconds, right? I can type here two or one, whatever I want. So set so time out three seconds and my navigate to my dashboard. So cool. Now let's uh, try actually, I want to try it. I saved this. So uh, let's refresh and let me open this on my console. There is nothing in my console yet, but anyway, I just want to I just want to enter some random email here com and some random password. If I click submit, you see we have success and it navigates us to dashboard, so it means we have successfully registered our user. So congrats. 
Now, but the problem is if I refresh this and take a look at my, where is my application here? We can't see any, uh, let's say, values in our local storage. That means uh, if you refresh, actually, technically, we are logging out our user. We are not persisting our user. And we want to avoid that, right? And if we want to keep our user in our server if he or she refreshes our page. How can I do that? It's pretty straightforward. And uh, in order to do that, I want to go to my register.js. And uh, let me see. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, into my app context. Uh, and after inside of this app provider, after this, uh, before actually this register user, I need to create this add user to local function is simply equals user token and inside we have local storage that set item our user user and json dot stringify um, our user so we have forgot apparently to add parentheses here. Okay, our user here. And I also want to copy this and paste, change this to token. And this also will be token. I always do that. It's an add user, it's const add user to local. And after that, I just want to make simply remove user, let's simply say remove user equals function is local storage that remove item our token and copy and paste it's our basically user and then I want to mm, let me see after this remove, I want to invoke that in my, let me see where, in my try and catch after my dispatch. So in my try register user, after this dispatch, I want to use, I want to define add user to local, uh, invoke that and inside I need user and token. So cool. And also, 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 just give me a second. The last step is to come here above after this initial or before this initial state. Let's say const token equals local storage to get item our token and copy and paste. It's our user and get item our user let's go to register page register some random name send run random email dot com password will be random and if i press submit in my app context again i want to change this user to a user if it's user actually we need json that part my user else it will be null so token will be just token anyway save and if i refresh again come back here to register and for example you see it now what's happening here even if i uh, refresh and come back to my uh, let's say login page it redirects me eventually to my dashboard again we have uh, persisting our user in our application. So let's delete that and refresh and come back now. Uh, it will be stay here. So my last step, my last step is to login user functionality. 
this it will be again basic because you are gonna repeat what we have done in our register so technically we have finished that and let's go to um, let's go to actions oh, i mean we already have login user begin actions right and uh, also let's go to app context and after this register user function i also need const uh, login user login user equals uh, of course they should be async and current user now inside i now for now will be console log is current user and now i want to add this in my value login user like that so let's go to register js because as you can remember we have if it's a member we have silly console log instead of this uh, i will tell login user but before we have to add in here login user equals use app context and now login user equals uh, not equals actually current user so save and it's cool let's turn back to app context in our login user and now i went to dispatch my first action dispatch my first action is uh, simply type again as a register register oh sorry login user begin now after that we have try and catch block error now inside of this try again we are gonna just repeat const uh, data equals await axios dot post again it's pretty much the same same path api version one out but not registered this time it will be logged in and my current user so const user token equals just my data so cool and now um after all of this i want to dispatch my success action right so type will be login user success and uh, my payload will be oh, let me just take this here and payload will be user token and uh, look uh, not uh, local storage i'm sorry <laughs> I just confused i'm just confused uh, user and token so after all of that again i went to add same user to local storage and again user and token in my catch also i went to again um, dispatch my error action type will be uh, login user error and my payload will be of course message is error dot response the data dot message and save and now inside of my reducer i want to make these changes right let's just copy this and let's just change this login user begin login user begin and in my login user begin i just need this state now i need also login user success let's change this begin to success and after my state i need again say my user is action the payload dot user also my token is action dot payload dot token 
as a register one. Exactly, we are just repeating what we have done, except for these names. And copy, paste, and the last one will be for sure error. And inside this error, just I don't have alert actions, just I'm going to keep state here. So technically, we have finished all of stuff, login functionality, I would say even full app. So let's try final. Um, I mean, I'm not going to um, make some styling to my, um, let's say, application. You can do that. It's your, uh, it's your app. Just let's try to... Just let's try to register new user and log in that if it's working. Random, na random name here, random Gmail here. Actually, you know what? We have to remember that. Let's make something easy. For example, zzzgmail.com and password will be just some easy password. Let's submit. And here it is our user here. And we are inside of our dashboard. So let's try to log in that user. And let's go to register and zzzzzgmail.com and same password here. If I press submit, yeah, we logged the user in and we are inside of our dashboard. It, that means we are successful. So what if I make a mistake in my, uh, let's say, input boxes? Let's, for example, again, repeat ZZZ and type something wrong password here. If I press submit, you see we have error. We have error, of course, post server, internal server error. So, of course, we can, we could change this. We can, uh, we could make another, let's say, alert here that your credentials are false. But I just don't want to waste your time. I will of course, explain this in my next video next week. And just I want to understand, I just want to, um, I just want you to understand how this user authentication works. I hope it was clear for you. Even if it's not clear, I will explain this again next week. So uh, good luck to you guys. Thank you for watching. Please go and subscribe if you liked, like the video also. So. Bye.